Well, first back to when I first became involved, when I got the phone call indicating that you're giving an award <laughs> with my name on it. And <clears throat> my reaction was, oh, somebody notices me. I'm really, I must be alive still. And it's, it's a great honor to uh, have that prize with my name associated with it. And it's even better when you come up and listen to these young, energetic, highly intellectual people who are trying to make a big difference and really make data play a bigger role in social sciences. This is really what got me started on this issue of how to do econometrics is I saw economics being almost 100% theoretical mm -hmm. and that the data didn't play any material role in uh, the way economists thought. And I thought that wasn't quite right, that we've got to do better with the scarce data resource that we have. And I've worked my whole career trying to produce uh, methods that, that would make us or would allow us to use the data in a more persuasive way and have the discipline more driven by the data and be able to provide policymakers genuine evidence-based advice about what's the best choices to be made. So this is a, an enterprise that has exactly the same target that I've had throughout my whole life. Now, it's carried out in a different way. I mean, uh, this replication isn't something that I've been involved in, in, but it's very, very important. I was appalled today to hear discussion about how few uh, articles in these various fields, not just economics, but psychology and, and, soci and uh, sociology, I guess, how few of these papers are replicable, not in the sense of, of uh, getting the same finding in another experiment, but simply using the data and carrying out the code and estimating the same model. You can't do that. So there's something wrong out there with our tradition. It's really, really great that BITS is involved in setting us on the right track. I, I think that uh, <clears throat> allowing data to affect us every day, you know, we walk around as human beings, we observe stuff, we try to inf infer. It's an extremely complicated process. To do it in a formal way is also very, very complicated. And, and I, I think progress is made, but I, frankly, I don't think economics or psychology or, or <clears throat> these other social science disciplines will really be fundamentally data driven. We can, it can play a larger role, but it's not ultimately going to be a data science, I don't think, because of the complexity. Right. We know that in our everyday life. Yeah. You know, we know how hard it is to figure out, uh, <clears throat> you have a spouse, is she, is she going to be happy today or not? You know, you never know quite what it is, and you don't know how much you contributed to the adverse outcome. And that's sort of the complex, non-experimental data that economists have to deal with. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, most policy is what might be called faith-based. Mm -hmm. If you look at the <coughs> articles written by economists, there's one set of economists who write for the New York Times, another set who write for the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. And their opinions are completely predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, maybe informed by data, but still a highly politicized, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> faith-based kind of uh, conversation. And that certainly is true in Washington. We've got work on the minimum wage now that's been funded by the Arnold Foundation, as a matter of fact. That's an area that really, really needs evidence to back it up. And I think policymakers might be amenable to that. But in our work with the city council, basically we ran, we, our, our advice was don't, don't uh, avoid the minimum wage, but have a trigger mechanism. In effect, if, if things start to show up that you're having adverse, unwanted unemployment effects, and you might be helping out a few with higher wages, but the unemployment effects are unbearable, you've got to call this thing to a halt. You've got to stop it, put a trigger mechanism inside your legislation. And the city council says no. <coughs> and the labor union said no. They just didn't want to have any kind of uh, 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 doubt, any kind of uh, concern. They don't want to be worried that it might not have a good effect. They just want to commit themselves to that conceptual framework that they use that makes them think that there's no such thing as a minimum wage too high. So I think that uh, it's one thing to improve the conversation among professionals. It's another thing to get that professional community being to be listened to in the policy centers in, in Washington, D.C. or in Los Angeles City Council or Sacramento, mm -hmm. etc. It's hard to do that. You know, I, I think most of what we have to offer is really opinion, sort of well-formed, thoughtful opinion based on evidence. 
but it's pretty hard to give uh, a clear-cut uh, evidence that anybody would agree is, is decisive. You think about like a fiscal policy, there's no real evidence out there that fiscal policy has a impact. Monetary policy, I mean, everybody thinks that low interest rates will stimulate the economy, but we've had them for six or seven years and there's been no apparent stimulus, and there's no real evidence for that. Still, you got to give policy advice, I think, and give uh, informed, thoughtful opinions, but it's not going to be scientific and therefore um, <coughs> open to question, I guess. Mm -hmm. The thing is you can't do randomized control trials in macro. Maybe in some areas you could do that. In education, maybe you could really get scientific evidence. But there's a lot, in, a lot of policy in, uh, in uh, economics that's not going to lend itself to randomized control trials. An example would be the minimum wage. We thought we had an experiment because the city council voted a minimum wage to increase to $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. We said, oh, this is going to be a great experiment because the rest of Southern California isn't going to have that minimum wage. We'll really see what the minimum wage does. Mm -hmm. But the, the uh, state ruined the experiment <laughs> by adopting a yeah. minimum wage schedule about <laughs> exactly the same as the city. So <clears throat> that's kind of typical is that mm -hmm. the, the state is not engaged in uh, experiments when it, comes to, with, with, when it comes to human subjects. It just won't do it. Well, first of all, the quality of people who are here is really exceptional. I think it's very, very impressive. Sometimes they get a little down on academics, and when I come up here and see all these bright young people uh, thinking hard about these very difficult decisions and making progress, so it makes me feel good. I think that it's, it's an agenda that is just starting to be laid out. There's a lot to be done going forward to achieve the ultimate goal, which we all have, is to improve the quality of, of evidence in uh, public policy making.